there are three major social forces occurring around cyberspace today. The second one concerns the emerging and growing role of the state in cyberspace. Well, the role of the state in cyberspace has shifted historically. Uh, in the early days, if you go back 20, 30 years and did a survey of government policy toward the internet, you would probably find that there were very few governments that were even thinking about the internet at all. In fact, I can recall people in the internet industry complaining that governments were not focusing on the internet enough. <clears throat> and interestingly, the governments that did focus on the internet at the time, like the United States, took a deliberately laissez-faire approach. Uh, Al Gore, who's, it's, there's a joke that, you know, Al Gore invented the internet, which of course is an exaggeration, but he did play an important role as a congressman in setting rules around actually removing the state from the internet economy. Uh, that was 25, 30 years ago at the very origins of the internet. Fast forward to today and the situation is completely upside down. Uh, not only are most states very concerned about the internet, cybersecurity is ranked typically number one among threat concerns for most government actors and it definitely is for the United States according to their last uh, national security assessment. Um, so. There has been a fundamental sea change in how governments approach cyberspace. And there are many reasons for why this change occurred. As many experts have pointed out, this was probably something to be expected. There is now so much technology connected to the internet, including critical infrastructures, that generates security concerns. There is growing evidence of global cyber espionage activities, and we now see, almost daily, large numbers of data breaches involving national intelligence agencies. So in many ways, it was perhaps inevitable that the state would get involved. But the most important reason behind state's involvement in cyberspace today came as a result of 9-11. It was the one moment that most fundamentally changed how states viewed cyberspace and that thereby accelerated the role states have come to play in cyberspace. We still live in the shadow of 9-11. Uh, it had a dramatic impact on how governments think about uh, national intelligence, national security, and surveillance. Prior to 9-11, I think it's fair to say most governments were concerned about what other governments were doing, and they oriented their national intelligence collection operations accordingly. Uh, they were concerned that in the middle of the night, a state on the other side of the planet would launch a ballistic missile, so we need to anticipate and defend against this. After 9-11, the concern shifts inward to all of society, all of the time. That the threat is now primarily, not solely, but primarily about an, an individual or a small group of individuals will blow themselves up uh, or uh, blow up an airline, uh, causing uh, panic. And as a consequence, government agencies have started to engage in mass surveillance and targeted surveillance of entire populations. Interestingly, at the very same time, those populations are turning their digital lives inside out. So th this is a dramatic shift in public-private relations, state-civil society relations. And it's not just happening in one country, it's happening all over the world. In other words, 9-11 had a massive impact on how states and people working in the intelligence community thought about addressing security threats. And it was particularly the perceived failure to anticipate 9-11 that led to a paradigm shift from looking for the metaphorical needle in the haystack to collecting the entire haystack to collect it all. But it is important for us to recall that 9-11 occurred in the wider context of important changes in military strategic thinking since the 1990s. Already beginning in the 1990s, there were people in the military defense establishment who had started to realize the significance of the interconnected, networked world that societies were emerging into and what this means for national security, military planning, for allied operations, 
and even for the conduct of warfare. And you started having uh, thinkers within the defense intelligence community talk about cyberspace and use the language of cyberspace, uh, borrowed from science fiction, to describe what they saw as a new domain, equal in significance to land, sea, air, and space. Um, that definition had very important practical implications. First and foremost, uh, once it became accepted in the defense community in the United States that cyberspace was a warfighting domain, that need leads naturally to the necessity of creating a special command for cyberspace. So you have in the 2000s the creation of US Cyber Command. That in turn affects other countries around the world. When a country as significant globally <clears throat> as the United States makes this decision, uh, it has repercussions. First and foremost for allied countries like Canada, Australia, other countries have to synchronize their militaries in order to, uh, in order to fit within the paradigm of their dominant allied country, the United States. But it also affects adversaries. Other countries, China, Russia, start to notice this shift in military thinking and take steps of their own, um, which they may have been planning already, but it certainly reinforces that information and cyberspace is a new domain within which wars will be fought and won.